Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Carl Goulet, and I am the gallery director here at Five Points. Uh, Remembering Ground Zero 20th Anniversary Show is a retrospective ex exhibition that remembers September 11th through paintings and artwork that recall both the time before the tower's fall and the collective shock and pain of the aftermath of the fall, when the world tilted on its axis and a new sort of chaos emerged. There are six artists represented in this exhibition, and all six artists are joining us tonight, um, and they are Don Bracken, Susan Creel, Charlotte Giorsi, Pamela Lawton, Gwyn Lohman, and Doriel Stray. Um, moderating tonight's panel is Power Booth. Power has exhibited his paintings for over four decades. His work is represented in numerous public collections, including the Guggenheim Museum, the Whitney Museum, the, and the Museum of Modern Art in New York. His work is also in many private collections nationally and internationally. Power is also a professor of painting at the Hertford Art School. Um, we will be opening things up for questions uh, after the talk. Uh, please use the Q&A at the bottom portion of your screen to type in your questions. Uh, I'll turn things over to Power now and we can begin. Thank you. All right, thanks, Carl. Um, I think uh, this is gonna be a very lively and um, um, spirited panel about a very difficult uh, subject. Um, as you all know, 9-11 uh, was a traumatic blow to uh, our identity as a country. Um, we um, never imagined that uh, two extraordinary uh, pieces of architecture that really had a much to do with defining New York, and it was a kind of international marketplace. Um, it was as big as uh, many small cities. It had at least over 20,000 people in those Twin Towers when the planes hit. Um, the artists in this show were um, connected to the Twin Towers in one way or another. And um, you're going to learn more about that. Um, I think the issues are so complex and the uh, emotional resonance of, of these events on these particular artists are, are so powerful uh, as can be seen in the show that um, what I'm doing, I want to do right now is just ask each artist to kind of give a, a little brief bio and how they found themselves connected to the World Trade Center. Um, and so let me start with Don. I'm gonna go alphabetically. Um, why don't you pick it up and uh, see, uh, help us understand, you know, what your um, orientation was to this astonishing event. Uh, you want me to tell about the working there first? Sure. Okay. So, anyways, um, I I uh, became part of the pilot program through the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council in 1997. I met Jeannie Dixon, who was the head of it, through a, a friend of mine, um, and so I was lucky enough to be in the program. I was one of the artists that were in the program that was not in the studio school. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I, I loved working there. Toro um, was uh, the person who I saw the most. She worked on the other end of our 10,000 square foot space. I could see her working away on large charcoal drawings. And I remember seeing Gwen and, and um, Pamela come in and, and do some stuff. Um, and so, um, like everybody else, when 9-11 happened, I, I personally was doing watercolors all day long in front of television, trying to deal with um, <clears throat> the whole, what was going on, trying to process it. So and Don, I'm, I'm gonna jump in, cause I'm gonna just explain. So you, were, you had your studio there 
and then your studio period stopped and you were up in upstate New York. You yeah. no longer had the studio. And, right. and like many of you who had a connection, deep connection to the towers, uh, you weren't there at the moment. Um, some of you were, some of you won't, weren't. Uh, but immediately you knew this was uh, something that wasn't just political, it was personal. <laughs> yeah, it was very personal. I think, I mean, I can't speak for anybody else, but you know, I mean, you know, you hang around the building, you go down in the lobby or down in the bowels of the World Trade Center and all the shops and everything at all the different cultures. There's this whole microcosm, you know, that we were part of. And, and, and so, yeah, it was like, here is just a crazy thing. And, and, and so I've done a lot of work over the years to sort of processing the whole thing because basically it shattered our, you know, like, or shattered my view of the omnipotence of, of America, its place in the world. And, um, and just the, the world order. It's just, it was just that moment when, when everything changed. And like what I wrote, it, it just seemed like the axis. The world tilted on its axis and everything would never be the same again. And so, you know, the paintings that I've done in reaction to 9-11 are, you know, basically shattered reality. Uh, it just shattered our reality of what was and, and everything afterwards is like a new beginning. Um, and I'm not sure how great the new beginning is, but I guess we'll find out. So. Okay, um, so Susan, I think yeah. you should, uh, well, just, I, you know, I, you've got a couple of minutes to say a few things. I think it's, you, you can't say it all, but um, I think the most important thing is what your orientation was when, the, when those planes hit. Well, I, I in a way, <laughs> I was sort of prepared for this in an odd kind of way because I had spent uh, almost two weeks in the burning oil fields after the Gulf, first Gulf War. And that was apocalyptic and it was uh, terrifying. And it was also like the beginning and the end of the earth. And I think that this is very much what this felt like when it happened, but it didn't feel absolutely new in an odd kind of way because I had been through that. Uh, but I was glued to the TV and I was taking photos of the video uh, as it was happening. And I, and I was thinking about, about how, I mean, in a way, it, it also didn't come as a surprise to me because, because what we were doing 10 years previously was sort of never, was never resolved. And it had, we, it had created a terrible situation in the Middle East. And we, we have had a tendency to just not learn from our experience, you know, as we can see with what's happening right now with Afghanistan and the end of the war. Um, but I, so I was just riveted on trying to get the feeling of this dematerialization of, of this, this vast, these vast buildings, the biggest practically in America and, and the way in which they just became atomized and in an odd kind of way, it felt metaphoric. And I wanted to see if I couldn't get some of that feeling of, of, of a destabilization that goes beyond, of course, you never get that, but that goes beyond um, the, the actual event itself and feels like it has something to do with the nature of the world we're in. So, in a way, um, you come to it with, I think, a much more uh, political perspective than, uh, it, it's a curious thing, I just want to underline it, that you, 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 weren't, you weren't surprised. You might be the least 
surprised I mean, I mean, of all of us. Of course I was surprised because it was a horrible, horrible event, but it didn't, it didn't strike me as outside the range of possibility because of what I'd experienced. Yeah. Well, Charlotte, you were down there on the, on the scene. You were, just had a baby. You just bought a video camera and, and suddenly you had a, you, you, you had a pile of craziness around you. Wow. Now, I'll try to be really brief. Um, I have to say that um, I had done, been doing business in the World Trade Center um, in the 80s. I sold strawberries out in front of the building and I had a mohawk that was this high. And I just remember thinking, man, the people are really cool down here, but these buildings are ugly. I did not like the style of architecture. And in art school, I ended up learning how to draw buildings. I'm like a really great house portrait painter. And my mentor was like, you really don't need to paint a building. And I was like, yes, I do. In fact, I really like painting portraits of buildings that are collapsed. That is actually what I really, really like. So you were prepared in a whole other way. <laughs> I was prepared in this weird way that, you know, not that I was detached at all from the loss of human life. And I knew quite a few people, but nobody personally. And the oddest thing was that I had befriended the fire department through this one firefighter, Mickey Cross, who ended up surviving in stairwell B and was pulled out at the end of the day wow. that day, September wow. 11th. Yes, he is a dear friend of mine. And he was kind of like the dad I never had. He was always like, Charlotte, you need to go meet Lisa de Kooning. She's going to buy some of your work. <laughs> and, you know, you need to go do this. And you need to ride on the rig and shoot photographs of the firefighters. And I was like, oh, yeah, let me do that. You know, I was like kind of like a dumb young person. Not dumb, but, you know, just kind of like bumping along. And... Um, so that happened. And then years later, I sold the collection to my friend, uh, Ron Rodriguez, who's a, who was an investment banker on the 90th floor. And I sold a collection. To you, him. you were comfortable with this idea of recording things in real time. All the time, constantly. So anyway. And now that, the planes hit and you're ready. So fast forward to 2001, I had been gotten married, which was a shock. Never thought that was going to happen. Then I had a baby, which was like, what the hell? And we then decided, a plane hits a building. Yeah, we decided to live on Lower Ludlow Street near Canal. And we bought a video camera on September 10th, today, 20 years ago. And, and down by the World Trade Center at one of the radio stores down there, one of the big electronics stores. And I was like, we're going to shoot video all day tomorrow. And so that's how, you know, it, it came and because I had so much experience painting destroyed buildings and buildings that were on fire and exploding, I had a freak attack. I was like, oh my God, first thing that happened. Okay. Sure. The street. Oh, sorry. No, I just wanna say, so there's a contradiction here and it's something that came up, um, comes up with war photographers. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> there's something the very, you're making a beautiful picture, but people are dying. Yeah, it was, I, I just wanna just nail one more point and I'll shut yeah. up because I could really go on. I felt really shut down. I couldn't paint for a year, but I knew I needed to. It was explosive in my body and like there was a sense and I felt really guilty. Ah, there we go. go I think this I is had a to big... go look every day. I walk down there every day with my little baby to go look. And that's all I'll say for now. Thank you. No, but I think that's an interesting tension that most uh, that's something we, we don't always talk about. Um, how do you translate something so horrific into something meaningful, beautiful? Uh, there is a is there, yeah, it, it's interesting to bring up guilt in that context. 
Yeah, I felt, um, and, and now I don't feel quite so guilty for revisiting, but I, I definitely for a long time was like, don't you dare, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. You know, that was like the internal dialogue. Yeah. And um, it was so, anyway, crazy time. So I'm gonna move on to Pamela. Um, Pamela Lawton. Yes. Um, let's hear how you came, you know, it seems like this, you're going about your daily life and then bam. <laughs> so then what happens? The World Trade Center. Well, I was part of the original LMCC, Lower Manhattan Cultural Council group that, uh, so I had, I, I had several studios at the World Trade Center, including uh, I chose to be lower than the others. A lot of people were on the 91st floor. I was on the uh, 24th floor. And it was partly, to be honest, because I was very uncomfortable in tall buildings. And uh, I didn't like the, the feel of the building because it moved. And uh, it moved a lot. And my space was uh, half a tower floor. So I had 60,000 square feet literally to myself. Um, you know, Rackstraw Downs painted there as my guest about three or four times. And Yvonne Jaquette, who was higher up, came down and painted there. But otherwise, I, I was there by myself for, for a year. And then I moved to the 53rd floor. And then I finally moved to the ninth floor in a different building. So I moved around for a year and a half in the mid to late 90s, I mean, 97, 98. And I, uh, I literally painted what it felt like to be there uh, at the same time as looking at the building from, you know, I was looking at the Deutsche Bank building from Tower 2. So seeing Tower 2, the building I was in reflected across the street, seeing in a way like a self-portrait, like seeing me in the building across the street, seeing the building across the street move and change um, according to the time of day, according to the weather. And you were doing work that had to do with reflections, water. Yes. In and fact, so you were prepared for that in, or you came to it with, a, rather than looking out at big vistas, you were actually looking at the, um, you know, the, the, the distorted reflections of the building. That, Absolutely. See in your work, uh, certainly. Thank you. Yes, I was very interested in water and reflection from being in Italy and painting uh, statues reflected in ponds and things like that. And um, when I first got to the World Trade Center, I, I was painting the Hudson River. And then I realized the real fascination was right across the street. It wasn't in the Hudson. And so yeah, and, and I also, I felt like the, the grid of the building um, reflected the passage of the elevator movement up. Mm. So you take the elevator up and then you'd stop and you get out and instead of being on terra firma, you were on wavy ground. And so really my work is, was a, a lot about that. Mm. And then um, as I mentioned, you know, uh, after 9-11, a painting of mine was buried under plaster for a few months, um, debris. Um, but then after that, I was painting at ground zero and with my back to ground zero, looking at a hotel, the Millennium Hilton and painting, instead of painting the reflections of the World Trade Center, I was painting the reflections of the World Financial Center way in the distance. So the light was different, the shadows were gone the scale of the windows was much smaller. And so ironically, even though the event was this horrible moment in our collective lives, there was a kind of beauty in the absence of the towers. Yeah, I think that's an interesting theme that I wanna keep going, this tension between Disaster, structure, disaster, chaos, and and a kind of uh, ethereal beauty that um, we could also feel guilty about, you know, because 
Uh, we're watching, but we could also take a 60,000 foot perspective and realize it's the way of the world, you know. So, uh, but um, before we get into that in any more depth, and I don't want to end that, let me get to the next person who is Gwen. And I have your, I'm what I'm looking at is your uh, bios that were sent. So let's get your insight into how you responded to processed and engaged the towers when they were destroyed. Um, well, I, I remember um, being invited to be part of the pilot program and um, and I had just come from a trip to, um, from Venice. So I, I had been sort of blown away by the new containers. And, and so I kind of came, not expecting to be part of this experience. I came kind of pre-prepared with sort of shaped canvases and things like that to sort of try it out. Um, and um, um, yeah, and, and just the experience of sort of just coping with the vista of the building and, um, and that relationship from being up so high. Um, I had grown up in New York, so you know I'd spent so much time looking at the buildings that this time I got to actually be inside of it. And you know what Pamela was saying about, you know, the shakiness of the building, and you know it felt very uh, like a skeleton quality inside. It was big and empty and had a warehouse quality. It was a very strange environment, you know. Um, and I kind of struggled with it for like off and on. I think I was painting with Terrell for about a year and a half and, um, kind of, I felt like we were fortifying each other because it's such a challenge to sort of, it's such a, it's such a huge visual piece of me to digest, you know, and you have to kind of just take it as you can, you know, just, just take it as uh, each piece every day. And, um, and then I, what happened is I actually um, had moved from New York in 2000. I came back in 2001 and, um, and I actually had gone to Tower 7 to pick up my slides. So I was actually in New York City like 10 days before it came down. I was in California when I got the call that the towers had fallen. And it was just the most shocking experience, you know, to have not only... Um, I mean, to me, it felt like the collapse of my past, of the East, you know, just everything of, that I knew in the past. And um, yeah, so I, to me, I mean, that, that experience feels like kind of a gateway experience to where we are now, you know, where I am now, maybe where other people are, but it's such a pivotal time. And, um, you know, to be part of it, you know, it, it was actually back then I thought it was sort of a kind of a, a trial, but now it's um, it was such an honor and a privilege to be part of it. Um, so let's go to uh, Terrell. Hey, and, now um, I see, okay. Yeah, I'm seeing images now. So I'm assuming images have been shown that's Gwen. Yeah. Gwen. Before, but uh, so let's let's talk about your experience, Terrell. Yeah. Hi. Um, yes, I was also one of the four artists in the show that was um, uh, invited to have a to this pilot pro program and have a studio in inside the World Trade Center. And I worked full time as an artist, so I spent, and it was always this urgency to the program because they kept saying we have to leave and then we managed to extend it and so on. So it was there night and day, but I just want to go back to like when I first came up there and uh, the goal was to be part of the program was called World Views. So it was based on, you know, looking out uh, perceptional experience uh, of that and um, that was initially completely overwhelming uh, on 91st floor 
Um, and I realized I have to work a lot in order to kind of, yeah, warm up also. Um, yeah, anyway, so I worked, I, that's what I did. And, um, and uh, you were talking about video cameras before. I also got one of those Sony video cameras that they used as a diary up there in the towers because I was there a lot alone and it was swaying and I was nauseous and there was no windows to open obviously. And I wasn't so used to air condition. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from Norway originally and, um, and so on. So uh, to be up in a tower like that was like being up on a mountain. That was sort of the only way I could kind of relate to it. And, and, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I'm in my work, um, I want a certain, I want the depth. Uh, um, I want you to be able to go into the pictures and out again in a way. So the depth that we were faced with, I mean, the vastness was just like tremendous, you know, it's like, wow. And then it had color dramas and it had, you know, stinky, ugly, <laughs> a hot, you know, language was really, really hot. It would just be like this gloom and then there were snowstorms if you couldn't see something, anything, I mean, and um, they were, you know, we were sort of part of the weather in a weird urban way. We were really like, interesting, yeah. you know, tower. Yeah, we were really there. And we saw the blimps. I didn't have, I didn't know at all that there was so much activity on the water. And in the <laughs> sky, so so I learned. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, it was it was amazing. And I felt, I remember, I I I, I remember, I compared it oftentimes with a, uh, you know, if you look inside a transistor radio or actually a computer, it looked like a little chip, you know, with all these things. I'm trying to make sense of this in paintings and and uh, and yeah, like that picture there, for instance, when the storms were coming in from New Jersey, for instance, it was like, it was like we were above. Sometimes the sunsets, we were above. The sun. It, it was a, it was a magical and and strange and like Gwyn was saying, you know, a strange place to be for an artist because, I mean, also if we just went to get a coffee or something, you know, we were the only people that was dressed in paint outfits and everybody was in business and, um, you, you know, so it, so the whole thing was um was yeah it was it, it sort of other otherworldly, you know, and um. um then, so where, where were you when the planes hit? Yeah, I was in Brooklyn. I was in um, Williamsburg. Um, so you were in America and you were no longer using the studio. You had no oh, longer. Yeah. I was in America. I was there for over um, yeah, 25 years. But yeah, it, um, um, I was in yeah, Williamsburg in the morning and the planes hit at what, 8.35? And at 8.38, I got a parking ticket, I remember. And I went into the dry cleaner and I saw on the TV that there was a fire. We all went down to the river. At the time, it wasn't built out on the river. And we had, I had already been down there with other artists painting and drawing uh, from the riverside. Um, and then more and more people gathered. And, and, and yeah, you know, everybody knows what happened. So, you know, so, so yeah, that's where I saw it. And, and, you know, I, my reaction was I got really, really, really angry. And um, yeah, that was my reaction. <laughs> I thought I never was going to see Europe again. I thought, you know, Bush was going to definitely shoot from his hip and so on. And of course, you know, it, so there was all this whole tension um, um, and shock, but um, uh, yeah, that was unbelievable, you, you know, and that it's now part of our history of our, you know, consciousness. And and I was just talking with a friend how much it's part of a trauma that's now generational, you, you know, and this is maybe where the art can come in too, uh, not exactly as therapy, but somewhat as a kind of a, a bridge maker, you know, a, 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 to to and express what's going on in society and what's, what was going on, you know. Um, but But initially when we were up there painting, we were, you know, looking whether it was patterned from buildings or, you know, one tower to another or a building or a street relation or, you know, it was very, very like painterly, you know, uh, it was a, um, a challenge artistically. It was a big challenge. So I also ended up, you know, I did work on 91st Street, uh, 91st floor. And then I really landed on 85th floor as a main thing because it wasn't such a steep bird perspective. And that's where I was doing that big, big charcoal drawing that's at the 9-11 Memorial Museum. And then I also um, was there so long, so I got you know some other access to other places in the building, 46, 56, and also south views that some of the paintings in the show in Connecticut is um, has some south views too. But it was really exciting to get a chance to uh, that Don Bracken took the initiative and then Five Points uh, Art Center took the initiative to make this show and put the show together. 
um, to actually look at them and take them out. I mean, I hadn't looked at um, a lot of these works for a long time and, and to show them um, tiny Great. ones and larger ones and very exciting. And I hope, I know we're gonna have 250 hey. kids next week and the fireman is gonna come and so on. And I hope everybody comes and see it. I can come and see it so or see you, it on their, yeah. You refer website. to um, the, the, the after the impact of 9-11, I wanna briefly explain what um, happened in, in just terms that are very stark. Um, because on the one hand, we have your personal recollections, and then we have to acknowledge that the United States in retaliation launched two wars. Um, we engaged in military conflict with dozens of countries. Um, our civil liberties at home were cha changed. We, um, now take our shoes off to get onto a plane and um, we're reminded of 9-11 almost every day because of um, the impact it's had on us. Eight trillion dollars spent on these wars that killed more than 900,000 people. For the first time in that we engaged in torture and tried to defend it as um, a policy that we should get behind. Um, that was astonishing. Um, uh, people lied to us about the success of these wars. It was very much like Vietnam in that regard. Um, there was a need to justify these wars that didn't always have to do with policy, it had a lot to do with people making money from these wars. Um, up until uh, uh, a few months ago, we were still pretending like we could win this war. Um, Biden's now pulled us out. His, his poll numbers have dropped because of it, yet, um, you know, in a way, bin Laden uh, uh, changed us in ways I don't particularly think are for the better. It's revealed some things about America that are hard to look at. Um, but there you are, as all of you as artists, um, dealing with a um, event that happened that touched you personally, but it's also as an artist, you often, you, what we will, through our work, um, make a much bigger kind of statement. And um, it's not just recording what happened, it's um, processing what happened. Uh, but we can't forget, it's a, it's a, it wasn't just a single event. It's, it was a transformative event. It was a traumatic event. Uh, trauma is something we obsess over. Um, I kind of want to go to Susan and ask you, you know, how do you process this at this point? You, your work has been so much extraordinary pieces about Abu Ghraib. Um, and your work, I think, are just absolutely beautiful pieces. How do you, how do you, think now, um, 20 years after, um, are you able to make sense of it? I don't know if I can make sense of it, but, but I think that there's a kind of trajectory that has run through everything that's happened and is starting with the Gulf War. Well, it actually probably goes back to the, to, to the Russians in, in Afghanistan, but you know, the, but starting with, with the first Gulf War and then 9-11 and then what happened afterwards with the torture and with this extraordinary amount of money that was, was squandered there. I mean, 40% of it was, was, was graft or, or actually projects that nobody wanted done that the United States did 
I mean, it, it's just, there, there is this, this strand that runs through it all that is so sad, so deeply, deeply sad that, that we just simply continue to try to run the world. And it, it just, there's got to be some other thing. And, and, and at, the, at, the, at, the, at the basis of it all is climate change. You know, we don't have any time left. There's no time left. I think if we tripped the switch already. But Susan, how does this relate to your work? Can you relate it to your work? How do you make those connections through your own paintings? Well, I, I see myself, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I, I was really a witness when I was, when I was at, you know, uh, in, in the Gulf. But I see myself as trying to, to try and leave some kind of a record of what seems to me to be really important. And I think that, I mean, there are two sides to my work. One is about beauty and the other is, is about this, this very, very dark side. Um, but in terms of this dark side, I've, I've, I've always felt that I go, I go for this kind of work when it gets me by the neck, a little bit like, uh, like when Ulysses gets Proteus by the neck and he's told that, that if you hang on long enough, he'll tell the truth. Uh, I, you know, I, I just, that's, that's when, when I do this. Um, and because I don't want to be an ambulance chaser, I want it to be something that has a deep, meaningful felt uh, presence for me. So I mean, I, I think that trying to find a connection with whatever I do and to uh, make that come across, and of course that's such a, you know, it's such, I don't, one never knows if you really do it, but that's the attempt. Can I ask you, Susan? Sure. Like when you, what's your reactions that you get on the on the work from Americans, uh, you, you know, when you sh you showed some of these before, right? Because I mean, they're powerful and they're like sort of, um, what's the word in English, you, you, you're processing the, 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 the pain of, or the, 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 you know, the darkness about what happened, right? But like you said, yet in a painterly or, you know, this is pastels kind of way, but what are the reactions to people? I mean, I saw some reactions in the gallery myself, but what, what's your experience with that, uh, the communication part of it? Um... I, I think that, you know, so I, I think it's been quite varied. You know, I think some people just see it through. I mean, one of the things I've always felt was I've used beauty very consciously, I think as a way of bringing people in and hopefully then there's something else that takes over once you start really experiencing it. And I think for those people who do, I think there's, there, there's some sense of recognition of something that is, that needs to be looked at and thought about. But mm. that, that, that's not everybody. Is that, does that answer, answer you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's yeah. a fine response, yeah. Well, Charlotte, when you went down there, how did that, um, you, you said you couldn't quite paint for a couple of years, but you were photographing, right? Um, yeah, and I just wanna comment, Susan, I really love the way they're displayed, your, your paintings, I, I really like that, thank you. They're beautiful. So the question for me was, what was it exactly? Well, you uh, said, you, I was surprised. I, I hadn't quite correlated when the paintings happened, but they happened a couple of years after. While you were down there, you were basically documenting. Yeah, well, this one in particular was a little bit, uh, I think that's one of the last ones because I started getting very much like the, the, the first few paintings I have, 17 that I made all together and I donated nine to the State Museum and Lisa de Kooning bought one. But so she ones, did buy one. <laughs> yeah, she did. She bought one. Um, that was so cool meeting her. And then sadly, oh my God, she passed away in 2012. I like found out a couple days after she died, but different story. But anyway, beautiful person, really lovely, lovely woman. She knew all the stories. Hit me up sometime if you want to hear the gossip. Oh, this is amazing, <laughs> this piece. Well, yeah, so this is, I think, earlier than some of the others. Um, 
there was, I got really obsessed, not just with photographing, because when it was going on, I grabbed my camera and ran up to my roof because I lived on the fifth floor of my tenement building right next to, right on Ludlow and Canal. And I was like, whoa, the smoke was this amazing red iron color and you could almost touch it and chew on it. <laughs> it looked like food. It was weird. And I had no I'll tell you, no sad feelings about it, completely detached, no hurry up, I need to do something. I did change my clothes because I knew I needed to leave the apartment for the day at least. I did not know it was a terror attack till later in the day. I thought it was a community neighborhood New York City event and nobody knew because I had no cell service, no phone. And my, my husband at the time came home and he burst into tears. And so then I knew it was serious. I was like, oh, wow. Well, you know, nothing else is going to happen today. So I had this weird in EMT school. I'm an EMT. I, I studied. I got an EMT training, emergency medical technician. They call it you stress. When there is an extremely stressful event, you become like a superhero. And mm -hmm. so I really became that way that day. And I had to take care of my husband and my baby. We had to withdraw all the money. And then we realized pretty soon that we were probably gonna just stay in Manhattan unless we wanted to walk out of New York City. And so the first image you were, you were looking at, um, some died immediately, most didn't suffer long. I'm gonna to totally cry talking about this. A bunch of us who um, were connected friends in the neighborhood we would just walk around during the day because nobody was working. We would hang out. We went to the playground. Um, he had me over. I actually interviewed, I was interviewing people. That's what I was doing. I was obsessed of what happened and I was interviewing people everywhere I went for days. And this one friend who actually was working next door to the trade towers kept hearing big thuds every couple seconds. And he was showing me pictures. That particular image was from a news clipping of people taking their lives as the towers were collapsing. And it was a crazy image because you could actually see the little tweed outfit that the girl had worn and that they were holding hands going down. And I was like, oh my God, it's, you know, death has got to be cool. We have to make it okay, right? To accept it, you know? Charlotte. And, well, that's a different discussion. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're taking us down a real long rabbit hole. And I, I apologize. I don't, no, no, I don't want you to apologize. I really think <laughs> but it's, the, a, the business... it's a great glimpse of what that terror really was. And you're so honest about your reactions. So, um, so I was captivated specifically yeah. just to wrap up a little bit about the images that I created. I was obsessed specifically of the atmosphere of what was happening with smoke because I love smoke. And the, the, like this image in particular reminds me of the whole idea of like, it's a postcard from America. Look what's happening to us. To relate it a little bit to the politics that Susan was talking about, that America became so vain well, that we did this. But there's an issue of just chaos is really under everything, you know, that exactly. the amount of energy it takes to maintain a building in which 70, uh, 20,000 people live and work. Uh, we forget all that. We just think those buildings belong, but they take a tremendous amount of energy to maintain. And when they're knocked out by uh, an act of terror, we are suddenly aware that, you know, it's all, it's, it's all going to go away. And in some ways, I think of Don's work picking up on this because 
he's like took the landscape back to for me it just i think it, it's it's brilliant it's chilling but it's he took the landscape of the city of civilization itself back to the cracking mud almost of the <laughs> nile um you know that 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 main you know where civilization began exactly um, this, i can this relate whole project that is so work. is so uh, it, you know it's it's all all so ethereal that order is ethereal like it's the chaos that's real um what do you think don <laughs> Uh, maybe we I'm can, giving an opening here. Maybe maybe we could change the image so we could see the image. Yeah, Carl can get that. But go ahead, talk about your oh. your oh. landscape as cracking mud and and the end of uh, it's almost the beginnings of civilization oh. and through which we see the city emerge. But we're always very aware that it's 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 not a um, like the one in the some of it feels like cracking cement actually well, well what, what it was was i i had, uh, in in 2007 i started painting uh with dirt i was documenting uh char farms that were disappearing and so then i had an opportunity to work with um uh as we're as showing at new arts gallery and i was working with somebody at hbo we were doing a project and so I decided to use debris from the World Trade Center. I met a contractor and he gave me about 40 gallons of debris from the World Trade Center. I, so this, this is my studio made out of debris. There's actual pieces of glass in there too and wire. And a little bit like... There's a bracelet. And, and, and so then I sort of progressed from that. Um, where I, I realized uh, the iconography that I always related to, as you can see, are the windows. And so I decided to use the, the, the size of the windows to, to be kind of a motif that I would use. And over that, I would use clay. By then, I, I developed a, a, a medium of, of polymerized clay, which cracks when it dries. And, I, and, and so I wanted to do a, a vision of the city cracking because that's what kind of what happened to our reality um, on 9-11, just everything just sort of cracked. And, and I've always been interested in archeology span and, and, and stuff like that. And so I, so I, I think clay became the perfect medium for expressing the idea of a, of a fractured reality. Um, and also in the, in the show, I, I know we, we talked about this power that I ended up separating the panels because when, when, the, when, you, when you separate the panels, you also get the, you get the sense of the size of the windows in the World Trade Center, but then they also become almost like gravestones with the uh, image of the city embossed upon them in a cracked, fractured way. And so, um, so anyways. Yeah, no, so I, I wanna just open it up to have you guys uh, ask each other questions. I have one I comment. Have one. Oh, go on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. I was just curious for those of you who had been there before and who had done work before, who did work after or at the time and then did work much later, was there anything that really shifted or changed in some major way of, in terms of how you conceived of it or how you, how you used materials differently? What, what, ha what happened with that? I'm really curious. I think Don probably had the biggest shift. Yeah, I mean, I totally s uh, shifted from painting with acrylics to to using to using yeah. natural materials. I mean, I still do acrylic paintings, but but most of my work is is using dirt and, and well, in and stuff. I made one painting as a reaction to this, right? It's called uh, Apocalyptic Landscape, and it's in the show. And since you, I haven't. Thought about it until you brought it up now, Susan. But I was very, um, 
it, it was definitely a very, um, it was on a raw linen canvas <clears throat> with rabbit skin glue on. So they, it was very important for me that it wasn't, that it was the raw canvas. It was only a couple of different blacks and an ochre and a white. And that was like, that's all I, that's, you know, that, yeah, that, that was very important for me in that painting. It wasn't about um, a color experience in a way. <laughs> um, I need to add something when you have a minute. And, and um, uh, yeah, I think that was it really, I was gonna say about Go that. Go for it, Charlotte. Um, I, I, I wanna just add because I feel like for me relating both to Torald and Donald and the, some of the work with, with Susan, um, just the business of atmosphere and creating, cause the business of working on creating debris and how like it just kind of mixed with the world was so much of a foundation for me. And I feel like I really relate to that in uh, all three of the, your uh, works. Um, and it's, you know, again, back to the death theme, it relates to, you know, where are we all gonna go? We're all gonna die someday. We're all gonna be dust. All right, I'll shut up. All right. Charlotte, <laughs> Charlotte, I worry about your own health. Are you okay? You can call me later. Charlotte, <laughs> Charlotte, can you hear me? Yes. I'm asking you. I just worry about your health. Are, are you okay? You were right down with all of the most. Um, you know what? I'll just tell you that I had to get sober. So I'll tell you that. And I am okay. good. So it changed. <laughs> it changed you. No, I got sober before I, I moved oh, to New okay. York City. But well, I, that's I, a whole I, other story. But I love being sober, and yes, I am well. But I think about death a lot. This year, I lost thirty people, mm. and I don't want to broach that topic because I had to be like, "Wow, man, dying is just cool. It's got to be okay." All these people died. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Some years, more people die. Yeah, no, we're all going to die. I'd we're like all to more, answer. We're all I'd like die. to answer uh, Susan's question uh, about how our perspectives changed, because, for example, the painting that we're looking at now is a painting I did at night from Tower Two on the twenty-fourth floor, looking at, uh, and then this is another one facing a different direction. So this is a series of night paintings, which was something I was kind of comfortable with. I'd already been doing night paintings before the World Trade Center, but I essentially took the idea of the LMCC, which is to paint in unused office spaces. And mm -hmm. after 9-11, I had a studio in um, the Marriott World Financial Center and the Hilton Millennium Hotel. And so I moved and then, you know, basically from uh, Zuccotti Park itself, all the way up to 2015. So I moved around the whole periphery of Ground Zero and, uh, and the New World Trade Center and the scale of things shifted, the light shifted. And um, this was this particular piece that's on view right now, that's, uh, those are 30 panels. One of the things I started doing is painting in separate panels and then putting them together. So each one is a watercolor on gessoed wood. And I did it from the uh, Millennium Hilton Hotel looking at building seven. And the new building seven is very different than the old building seven because the new building seven was designed by someone who left the Mullians out of the picture. So when you look at the building, you didn't see you know, the boxes. And so my boxes were created by the wood panels, but I didn't emphasize edges because the whole idea was that the building was supposed to dissolve and just reflect the sky and uh, the, the, the urban uh, landscape. That was the, uh, the concept of the architect and that was what I ended up painting in my own work. So in some ways it changed or is it a continuation? No, of it's you... changed. Like in this one, you can see also there's there's, you know what mullions are? They're like the, the heavy dividers that show the window frames. So this is building four, that the new World Trade Center that I did from Zuccotti Park, it's a watercolor and I did it on the street. So there's a kind of freshness 
to the experience of painting on plein air as opposed to painting in an office building. So um, it did change because the architecture of the New World Trade Center changed the design and the, the structure of the windows. Right, but you kept working with the patterns that sort of you discovered that in when you were in the World Trade, right? And then you went with that and went with that. It's, fa it's fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, it was, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of, um, but this one I also did it in Zuccotti Park. It's, the color is better, I think, in the original, but in this one, I did make the mullions a little bit more pronounced because I put a, um, you know, an underlaying of modeling paste to create an actual texture of the grid. But the patterns remind me of, you know, Rudy Burkhart was around at the time. I was in a drawing group with him. <laughs> And he talked about my World Trade Center work as being like Jasper Johns's number series, where you have things that are the same in each box and then things that are different, like how things repeat, how they transform, how they echo one another, like a pattern, as you said, to real. Mm. And um, so it's kind of playing off of that more abstract thing as well as perceptual shifting. But that reminds me when I was making that. Um huge oil painting of it I felt like I was making like a carpet I was making like a Persian carpet or something because the city you know with all those earth colors downtown and then the the, the more you know metally and midtown I mean it was from it was fascinating it was sort of alternating talking about the beauty of being there but it's also the heart the, the disaster and the you know and the political part of it so but I'd like to hear from Gwyn a little bit like uh, you know you worked also from perception up there Gwen, did she check out? Sorry, no, 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 I put it on mute, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I remember at the time, like we're in a very commercial environment, like you were saying before, and it's bankers and it's- but what, about, what about the shape where you're painting? I mean, it's not, it's kind of unusual. Well- <laughs> And so the when, circle? Yeah, um, so it was an experiment, but I remember thinking like when you're looking at this, visual motif like obviously the sky is a huge part of this whole environment you know that the the material in the atmosphere and how you connect it and I thought for me like doing this shape was a way like I'm always kind of interested in the circle and the square like how you combine that usually I think of it inside but then you know so the structure became you know the actual canvas but you know I with my dog <laughs> um yeah but you know there's something somebody was saying about um I, the, the question that was posed is like you know more i think it was about um how the event how what happened affected you and your process right more or less and i kind of think of it, it affected me more like i think of the word trauma when i think of that whole event and like how that changes you as a person. So I think I, I personally use all the same materials I ever did, but I don't feel the same exactly, you know, since that time. Can you say more about so that? That's exactly uh, what I'm interested in. Yeah, me too. So can you say more about that? You don't feel the same. I, you mean? know, it, it was kind of a confluence of like personal um, things going on. And I think, um, well, I'm sorry, I'm not, too familiar with some of the art artists, but somebody was talking about like, you know, big changes going on in her life and things like that. But I, 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 I kind of feel like that event was so traumatic that it just knocks everyone into a whole other perceptual kind of way of perceiving the world. Like you're just not the same. I can't even look at the towers falling, you know, to me, it's, it's like kind of this, it, it starts to um, hypnotize me. Well, it's, it's, uh, can I suggest? Well, it, well, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say it's the physical aspect of it, right? And the pain and, and death and all that. But it's also so very much, also maybe I can, it's easier, or I see it because I'm not American, but it's a symbol. You know, it was a symbol that, you know, I wasn't particularly close to, I lived in New York forever, but I wasn't particularly close to the World Trade Center, for example, you know, like the, as a building or as what it stood for, right? Wall Street and all that. But at the same time, it was that was the symbol that they knocked down. And, 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 and I think that is almost as big as what actually happened. 
Yep. It's almost like they destroyed any pretense we had of ourselves, you know, like, you know, the towers were built at least on the surface in, in a measure of goodwill and commerce and peace through commerce and stuff like that. Exactly. I think we can look into it more and there's something else behind it, but so to see that destroyed and, um, and I grew, you know, I grew up living in New York and seeing the towers. I mean, it was, it was really like seeing like, I'm, and you saw it happen. So it's yeah, no yeah. longer, we're no longer invincible. There's a That's sense right. that um, there's a vulnerability that we didn't have before. But, but then I have and, to say- and, and maybe, But what I want to say is that that might be a really healthy thing on one level in that, you know, there's a kind of arrogance to thinking, you know, what we build will last forever. Uh, no. Well, but, so, but, but, but on but the other hand, to have this sense of being in some balance with the aspect of chaos that you know can take it out any minute um you know maybe uh, tunes us up to life we're more um aware of how ethereal or ephemeral life is well, how important it is to keep keep um to pay attention you know? yeah how vulnerable life is and by the way but, Gwen, but also, really but love also, your use of color your color is amazing Gwen. thank but, you Oh, thank you. But also, the, also the fact that um, that you know America, like we were a little bit political before, America can continue to have, you know, they can't just fight wars outside their country and on TV, right? Like the Gulf War was on TV, right? So, so it's sort of, right? So it's a bit of a wake up call for America, for sure. You know, I mean, it's changed the whole world, but one of, one of the things huge wake up call. Was really important about this was that this was made this attack was made specifically for prime time it was it was it was they were bringing it into a whole new realm of the media and it was very very thought out and well well planned in relation to that it was but I, was, I was having said that i was really impressed by by the, the 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 way new york just kind of uh, remolded uh, you know i mean yes a lot of things Changed Homeland Security and, and TSA and so on, but but just how like on a human level, uh, what was going on with the to experience being in the city with the candles everywhere and where yeah. people were looking for people and you know Pamela finding her painting and all this. It was this whole powerful, beautiful time, you know. Also, and then I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but exactly where I was, you know. Even though I was completely. Yeah, and art became very important, even more important than ever. You know, I felt like, yeah. So, really glad we're doing the show. And it's now great. we do have a few Excellent. questions. Yeah. yeah. So, Carl, questions. let's open it up to questions from from the audience. There are some. There is at least one or two. Yeah, there's there. a few in the chat. Well, do you want to uh, pick one and <laughs> toss it well, uh, to the panel? Questions. How do you deal with the pain? of the people involved as many of these images, it is absent in the work I can see on the screen. Well, so how I, do you deal with the pain of the people involved? I, I have, I, I actually have a, a number of them that I think deals precisely with that, with the whole sense of the diaspora, with the sense of, of, of people who are being traumatized and, and covered with dust and covered with whatever. And um, there, there's some that aren't in the, in the, uh, in the show that show, show the falling, horrible images of falling people. So I'm, I'm think, I'm, that was one piece of what I, at least I was thinking about. That was one, maybe a quarter or a third of, a third of what I was doing. Yeah, I was dealing with it. Um, I mean, in one way, I deal with it in all my work, <laughs> but uh, just the kind of painter I am. But, but uh, it, just more literally speaking, I was dealing with it um, in trying to um, capture it in that apocalyptic landscape where, you know, people are getting up from their like from the soil, from the earth, and they're falling down. And there's, you know, um, yeah, just. You know, disastrous scene in a way, but that there also is light on the horizon and life will go on and go on, you know. So th there is that also in the dark that there is light. So, 
So there was a question related. I can see the chat now. Uh, Susan, more related to you, Susan, how does the pain show up in your work? Well, I think that I think it oh. shows up through gesture. I mean, I think the one that we're looking at right now, I mean, there, there's that sense of, of I think of, of the gesture of <laughs> loss of, of, there's a feeling of, of, of how, where, where are we? What are we doing? How are we, how are we functioning? And I thought it was really important that it be seen through the lens that was covered, you know, with, with all the goo from, and the junk from, from, from the fall. Um, I, I also did a, did one of, of, of Father Michael, who was, uh, being carried by the firemen when he was dead, uh, which was a very, very sad, very, very sad image. Um, you had a piece of, uh, it was titled uh, something about the, all the paper. For well, some reason, I don't know why that paper gets to me. It's such an un small thing, you know, paper, but raining paper, it just seemed like it fit the sadness yeah. here, yeah. I mean, in a way, I, I feel almost as if the paper and the figures are all just as transient. Yep. Um, I mean, the business of being uh, experiencing uh, or trying to translate pain in a work, it seems it's very subjective. Like mm, I absolutely. am not wired like everybody else. And that's probably partly why I became an artist was as sort of to be a funnel for the experiences that I have every day to relate them to the world and reflect them to the world and the world can look at my work and be experience what they feel. So I don't know if that's even a fair question because not everybody is present to look at the work and experience the desired emotion. Do you know what I mean? Right, but I, but I think, that, you know, it's a whole different discussion, maybe, but I, I think, you know, it's... it's there but are, it's part of this discussion. This is important. Yeah, but what yeah, you no, I, I'm not saying, I didn't mean it that way, Charlotte. I just meant that we don't want to be just literal, you, you know, that's the thing. So how can you tell a story? I'm with, very literal. <laughs> right, but, but, but I would want to be abstract as well. So it's like, a, it's a, you know, it, the work needs to transcend uh, uh, that um, in itself. But yeah, it's... Um, I think that when we work at, at our best, at least for myself, we become a conduit for what it is we're trying to say. That, that, that it, it goes through us rather than micromanaging it. In some exactly. Way. Right, but you need, you need to have the hands. You have to have yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't happen immediately. <laughs> right. It also, it doesn't have to be so literal either. Like Terrell was saying that no. you can express transience. You can express the fragility of a monolithic Wall Street created edifice you can express its uh, dissolution and its transience and the people in it through more um, abstract perceptual yeah. means. It need not. I agree. My only point is that because the work is there does not necessarily mean the person who sees it will feel what the artist felt when they made it. I think that That's Beckett, all. Beckett, as I believe, once said that you work as hard as you can. I'm not obviously paraphrasing because he would say it beautifully. Uh, you work as hard as you can to find the, the exact words of what you mean. And then the person on the other end doesn't understand it. 
or they <laughs> might they might no, no well no but it's not about me and my um my, uh, me i mean like you're talking, talking about, about it's, it's funneling through us like you said but of course it's about me at the same time because there's my temperament and it's this and that but but at the same time it's completely irrelevant what i felt when someone sees my painting uh, you, you know, uh, really, you know, it's what the painting is saying or the, the drawing or whatever it is, but it has to be able to talk for itself. And one would hope that, you know, in, we were talking about this disaster, you know, what it impacted it had on New York, on America, on Europe, on the world, and it's on in everybody's consciousness, right? So that we have something mutual. Everybody has something in common. It's like some subconscious or something where it's all the same source or the same, the same, it's the same, where <laughs> it's, it's it's subconscious, unconscious, and so from that place, you, you know, if you get imagery from there, it could be experienced as healing images, you know, because I do think art has that healing quality, you know, and and um, it, it sounds almost a little pretentious to say, but it does it it, it does have that a soothing, you know, um, quality that make you aware of that you're alive and not dead, and and also it's kind cathartic. Of you mean like catharsis? Yeah, it can be it can be cathartic, but it also uh, will be on life. But I, you know, we can't control how the viewer sees it. One would just hope they see a lot of art, and 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 are used to imagery, you know, and maybe draw themselves and and just kind of, you know, that's I really encourage everybody to do and to just give art a chance and 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 yeah. Oh, I, so Charlotte, I want to jump in and say, that what if you thought of what you made was, and in, in a sense, you're sharing a dream with us. Oh yeah. So you I'm think it, you you do it as literally as you can, but it's actually a dream you're sharing. And then when I come to it, um, I'm interpreting a dream in through my own experience. So we'll never have. It'll be like um, two different radio stations tuning into each other, much more right. than any direct uh, line. And but that's the nature of art. And I just think uh, it has all that fluidity and openness to 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 interpreting work in ways that you couldn't have imagined when you made it. Exactly. It could be bigger than you made you thought it yeah. 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 I mean, I just want to reflect. You, I have I have another show currently up and I use a ton of black India ink. I don't like a lot of color. I use black, white, gray, and in between. I, that's my palette. And I call it dreamscapes all right that's what i call it that's and good. i'll just that's tell good. you the title of my other show is always open great because i have to always be open good. to get and receive the message so thank you for saying that <laughs> so don you i stepped on you you were about to say something that's okay power we're old friends um <laughs> uh, uh, yeah what i was going to say is uh, uh, pain, emotional response, and all that stuff. If, if you do things in a very visceral, emotional way, um, first of all, it's about your emotions, but if it's very viscerally and emotionally painted, generally people get it. I mean, I have work that isn't in the show, but the one that I was thinking of was I wasn't in my studio. 9-11, I was in upstate and I came to my studio the next day to meet a dealer at my studio. And what I had up on my walls was I had three large panels I had done in the World Trade Center on Mylar that were the size of the windows in the World Trade Center. And they were images of, you know, Manhattan on Mylar. And my only reaction, my reaction when I walked into the studio was, I went and took red oxide paint, you know, more or less the color of blood. And I just, I just threw paint at those, at those images until they were covered with red, red dots, because I just felt like you know, that's just sort of what happened, you know, it was just, it was just a very bloody, gruesome day. And uh, that was my visceral reaction. Um, it's not a, a big seller. It's, you know, so, but. I ran home and made the run. <laughs> has everyone seen Carl's message to us? Yes. So I think we can wrap this up by uh, um, maybe just do a round robin. Um, 
how do you, uh, why don't we start backwards with you, Toro? Toro. Um, so is there a word, is there a thought, is there a, how do you, you you've, you've been processing this for 20 years, do we have a gem, a, something you want to say? It's part of my history and it's part of the history now. Um, do I have a word? Um, don't know what's going to happen next, but just, you know, I, I feel uh, just uh, to a certain degree humbled by it and, and grateful for having the chance to been um, sort of at the windows of the world and all of that. Um, and um, I think, um, yeah, we never know. Um, like we touched on death a couple of times and, and, um, and I, I, we just have to keep at it and, uh, and keep, keep at it as artists and, and try to express um, what's, you know, what's going on in society and, and uh, as well as a certain kind of beauty, I guess. Um, but more like just try to express what's going on. This, so I don't know. I, I, that's, I think, what I have to say. I haven't premeditated if I have one word. Um, it would be um, when something tra transpire. Is it called? No, no, what's it called? When it uh, continues on. Um, yeah, when endure. It continues. <laughs> <laughs> was something. We endure, we flourish, we continue. We emerge. Yes. Well. Well. Yeah. I, yeah. So, Gwen, what do you want to? Would you like to say? Um, I guess the only thing I was thinking of is the one that question about the, you know, being um, expressing the pain of of the people that passed away. That all that that happened, and I kind of think that um, that there was also the uh, the celebration of what was there when it was there. You know that that's how you honor things that had at one time existed. So I think just by being there, painting and being part of it was part of that process. So I see the window of Pamela McCann, which I is this Pamela Lawton? Are you there? No, the, I think Pamela McCann was brought in by Carl to show the screen because Carl's screen wasn't screen sharing. Yes. Yeah, Got it. Okay. So Pamela Lawton, you are Pamela Lawton. <laughs> okay. So what are your thoughts? Oh, it's hard to sum up. Uh, yeah, it's impossible. I, but the word is gratitude. Uh, oh. Gratitude oh. for a mind expanding, life changing experience of among other things, facing my fear of heights in the World Trade Center, meeting uh, Tariel and Don, especially, and, and also Gwen, but I, I got to know Tariel and Don more. D the experience that we could all come together later and, and uh, reflect on it, um, the opportunity to be in the show. And uh, I think that just last thing, the, the, the idea that you know, what we express may not be what the person receives who's looking at our work, but if, like Don said, if the motivation is there, it comes through somehow. The, the commitment to our personal vision, we all have such different um, approaches, but uh, I think, you know, for me, every time I thought my studio was almost over, I made more work. And then they kept extending it every two months. We would, our studio would be extended, and um, that feeling of having to be in the now and all that that gave me is something I'm really grateful for. Cool. So Charlotte, you yes. and your baby with your movie camera. Oh well, the baby is 20, and then I had two more, and I have made a couple of films, and I'm really. So flattered by getting invited to be in a show at all because who even knows who I am, man? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I was just blown away when I when I when Donald reached out to me and Torreld and and I want to stay in touch with all of you guys and come meet in person. And for me, 
the thing about this show is that it gave me an opportunity to create more work because when I stopped painting the debris series, I had worked a lot of things out emotionally because let's face it, it was extremely, you know, just to be connected to my work in that way through this event was so very important to me to not deny that there was this huge thing. And I myself am a trauma survivor before um, even experiencing the trade tower attacks. So um, it has opened me up in a way, uh, this talk and this show to just create more. I have a bunch of things in the can that I'm working on that are more debris paintings. And at, at first when I was making them, I, I was like, holy shit, I better hurry up. I waited a whole year before I started painting. Oh my God, I should be over this by now. And it's like, you look up and you go, well, wait a second, they're not over it. They're <laughs> not over it. What's the rush? So my word is the world needs more art. Whatever you're making, continue, keep working. Even bad art is really important. And I love you guys. All right, and I'll give you my number later. I think I lost contact with you. Charlotte, we love you. <laughs> uh, Susan, or yeah, Susan. Well, um, empathy, mm -hmm. main word. And then from that, because of where we are in time and space, saving the planet in whatever small way we can, and art can have a voice. It can make a difference, huh? I don't know if it can make a difference, but it can have a voice. Art can change the world. Good art should save the world. Well, save the world. Well, no, not save the world. <laughs> change our attitude, change our understanding of ourselves, humanity, who we are, what we are here for. I think it I think it allows people to see something in a different way and that's important and some, sometimes that has an avenue, avenue into other ways of thinking. Maybe just to slow down, huh? That's the point too. Slow down and open up, I guess. So it sounds a little cheesy, but it's sort of, you know, you have to be open also. But thank you so much, Power, for uh, taking us through this. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored to do it. I, I, I wasn't... Um, we haven't heard from I'm, I'm thrilled that you asked, but we need uh, uh, Don is going to say the uh, our final. Oh, yeah. Give right. us our final insight. Uh, a word? I guess empathy. I like empathy. Empathy is good for. It's uh, a good word. For, um, yeah, for, yeah, trying to have understanding for everybody in the world. And gratitude, I think, is a great one, too. I'm grateful for. Being able to have the work in the World Trade Center, uh, for being able to meet Trill and, and Pam and Gwen. And <clears throat> I guess I'm grateful for five points for, for um, I talked to Judy um, McElhorn about three or four years ago about this show and, and Carl, and, and they remembered that I wanted to do this. And so I was glad that they. They yeah. uh, let us do this. Um, and I'm grateful for Trill for when I contacted her. Trill was the first person I contacted. And I was excited when I found her in Norway. And we, we spent many hours uh, looking at artists and going through stuff. I was grateful that I got to see what Norway looks in the forever night that they have or the twilight <laughs> <laughs> Toriel would take her her laptop and say oh look at this look at the bay there see the little orange sky that's <laughs> pretty... studio by the fjord in the city yeah <laughs> yeah um... well I, I i yeah so i'm so grateful you did this um don and all of you participated in this Really extraordinary show. I enjoyed being there this afternoon. Um, and I just, the one word I have is passion. Just keep it up. You know, it's really tough to be an artist. Uh, it's tough to manage the anxiety of just 
making it happen. Um, but I, I just think this is an astonishingly beautiful show of a very difficult time. Thank you so much. That was very well put. That's an, an, and it's lovely, lovely to meet all of you this way. And I hope to in person. And here. Yes, let's. Yeah, you guys have a lot of light. I like all the light in the show. <laughs> all right, so Carl? Yep. Are you still there? Have you gone? Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, everyone. This was a phenomenal artist talk. Um, I want to just emphasize, thank you, panelists. Thank you, Power. Um, Remembering Ground Zero is up through September 25th. Um, Five Points Gallery is open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., Sundays, 1 to 5 p.m., and by appointment. I also want to bring to everyone's attention of the grand opening and benefit for the new Five Points Arts Center uh, located at 855 University Drive. Um, the event will take place on October 16th, and you can find more information on that event, this show, and our workshops on our website, fivepointsarts.org. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Was, <laughs> thanks to the audience. I... <laughs> yeah. Thanks to all the artists. Thanks, guys. I wish I could have seen the audience. And it will be on YouTube, so you can see it there. <laughs> oh, great, great. Carl, I'll be in touch. Yeah. I'm going to call you. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in Norway soon. <laughs> can I call you on Facebook <laughs> okay. Messenger? Have a good, I think we're, are we still recording?